Hey, what's up everyone? This is Brian and welcome back to Beginning C-Sharp with Unity video screencast series. In this episode, I'll be covering operators. Operators are a fairly large topic in C-Sharp, which I could spend a lot of time covering. Instead, we'll review the most common operators in this video, and then later in the series, I'll cover individual operators where they make the most sense. Operators are really important in C-Sharp. An operator, in essence, represents an action that you wish to do on a particular subject. Here are several operators that you should already be familiar with. Each of these does an action, and they don't just work on numbers. Take the plus sign. Using it between numbers adds the numbers together. You can also use it between strings, which will combine the text. As you can see, operators are context sensitive. Let's see some of these operators in action. The first operator is the equal sign. If you are coming from a math background, you would think that the equals denotes equality. This is not the case in C sharp. The equal signs performs an assignment. Take, for example, the following statement int x equals 1. Let's break this down. Here you create an int variable and you are naming it x. Next, you are assigning it the value of 1 to it. Now, let's look at this statement, x equals x plus 2. In this statement, you are adding x plus 2 and then assigning it back to x. After this statement, x would be 3. If the equal signs meant equality, then the statement would make no sense. Thankfully, this isn't the case. We are simply assigning the result of the expression back to x. This operation is pretty common in C-sharp that we actually have a shorthand syntax. Instead of writing x equals x plus 2, you could instead write x plus equals 2. This does the same thing, except the syntax is a little tighter. If you only wanted to increment x by 1, you could use plus plus x. Likewise, instead of writing x equals x minus 1, you could write x minus equals 1 or even minus minus x. The plus plus and the minus minus are called prefix operators. There's actually postfix operators as well, and to be safe, don't use either of them. There's a slight difference in their behavior that can easily mess up your code. In fact, the difference is so subtle and prone to error that the Swift programming language has recently removed them from it. Next, we return to the plus sign. As you've seen, the plus sign not only adds two numbers together, but it can also combine strings. Later, as you encounter other types, you'll see the plus sign may work on them. For instance, Unity uses vector3 objects, among other things, to keep track of positions of objects in 3D space. You can use the plus sign to add these two vector objects together. As you progress and start making your own types, you can also allow your types to use the plus sign or minus sign or any other operator through the use of operator overloading, which will be covered later in this series. Multiplication and division work the same way as you expect. The thing to keep in mind when working with them is the order of operations. The order of operations determines which operator will be evaluated first. Take a look at this statement. int y equals 1 plus 5 times 0. Can you guess what the answer is? It's 1. You may think it's 0, but that's because you didn't follow the order of operations. Operators have precedence. Multiplication and division have higher precedence than addition or subtraction so they are evaluated first. In this case, you multiply 5 times 0, and then you add 1. When dealing with statements like this, it's best to use parentheses, even if you know the proper precedence. Parentheses have a really high level of precedence, so anything within them will be evaluated first. By using them, you are telling not only yourself, but also other programmers your intent with the statement. When writing code, there's always a temptation to write complex statements, but at the end of the day, clarity matters. Oftentimes, clever, complex statements can turn into nightmares months later 
when you are trying to figure out what that statement does when everyone else has forgot. Save your cleverness for the actual game. With code, you'll never go wrong by being clear and understandable. The last operator is the modulus operator. This operator simply returns the remainder from a division operation. Let's take this statement, 7 divided by 5 equals 1. Since we are doing integer math, all floating points are dropped. The statement tells us that 7 divided by 5 is 1. If you want to know the remainder, that is the stuff that's left over, you use the modulus operator. Thus, 7 modulus 5 gives us 2. That is, after 7 is divided by 5, we have 2 left over. This is a handy operator to determine whether a number is even or odd. Take, for instance, the statement x modulus 2. If x is equal to 10, then the result of the modulus operation is 0. Hence, the number is even. If the result is greater than 0, then we know the number is odd. Let's see these operators in action. OK, in this demo, what we're going to do is create a new script to play around with operators. And to do that, I'm going to select this Create button in my project browser, choose c -sharp Script, and I'll just type in Operators. Next, I'll double click it to launch Visual Studio. So here we have Operators open, and naturally, we're going to do all our interactive code inside of on Disable, like we've been doing throughout this screencast series. Now, you've already seen in this series how addition with strings and additions with numbers work. One thing I think it's important to highlight is the order of operations. And what we're going to do is create a large statement. So this statement is a little bit ridiculous. As you can see, we have lots of operations going on in this one place. We have 100 divided by 4 times 20 plus 3 times 2. Now, as you remember, the order of operations state that multiplication and division come first, and then addition and subtraction come afterwards. There's actually a lot more to it. And to tell you the truth, I highly recommend you check out the C Sharp language guide if that's something you're interested in. But in this case, we'll have to start with a division and multiplication. And since division and multiplication have the same precedence, we simply go from left to right, meaning this equation would first be evaluated from 100 divided by 4, and then that result would be times 20, and then, the, and then 3 times 2 would be evaluated, and finally the resulting of both those expressions would be added together. Now, this is somewhat sloppy, and the way we can make this a little better is using parentheses. So we can say 100 divided by 4, and in this case, we can put another parentheses over here, like so. And then we can put a parentheses around this. Now again, the statement is running the exact same way, but now the programmers know exactly what's going to happen first. So here we are back in Unity. I'm going to select my cube, and we're going to remove Mad Libs from this. And we're going to add operators to this. Now I'm going to run this. We'll open up the console, select the cube, and then deselect it. And here you can see x is 506. Let's do a quick demonstration of the modulus operator. I'm going to switch back. In this case, I'm going to create a public integer. And we're going to call this value, and we'll set it to 0. Now what we'll do in on disable is we'll determine if this is even or not. Now remember, if the modulus prints out 0, then it's even. If it prints out 1 or higher, that means it's odd. OK, we're going to run our game. I'm going to select the console here, and then we have the cube selected. And you can see here we have our value field. Let's put in 100. And now, if we disable the cube, we have the value is 0. So now we know 100 is even. Let's put in 101. 
and we will enable our cube and now we'll disable it. And you can see the value is one, meaning that this number is odd. Well, that's the end of this screencast, but as always, we like to end off with a challenge. In your challenge, I want you to create a tip calculator. I want you to create a new script. And in that script, I want you to provide a field for the balance and then a percentage of the tip. Once you add the proper values to those fields, you should disable our cube and print the result to the console. Well, I hope you enjoyed this screencast. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.